Have you ever seen a picture with swirly bokeh or bokeh, depending on what side of the planet you're from? Let's take a look at how that's created. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo joseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. It is a live show. It's live. That means that you, the audience, can participate live if you can tune in at this time. Um, and if you get to participate, in, you can participate in the chat if you're here live. It's super fun. See, people chat, we, they communicate, we talk back and forth. After the show, we'll do a Q&A, so any cues that you have, drop them into the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. If, of course, if you're not watching it live, put them in the comments and uh, I will do my best to try and help you out. Hey, so uh, to Today's show. Oh, incidentally, I was thinking about doing like a, I'd like to say every other week, but that's just a bit ambitious. Maybe once a month or so, I do one of these shows or just do a Q&A, um, what do you call it, an AMA and Ask Me Anything show, but at a totally random time of the day, just to try and get people in different time zones. What do you think of that with that? I mean, obviously you, you who are watching it live now are like, no, no, this time works for me, obviously. But those who aren't watching live, if you like this idea, put a comment down below in the chat, to, in the comments you know, where comments go. Let me know what you think. If I should do a show, it'd be like, I don't know, maybe 5 p.m. my time or maybe midnight if I'm up in the, I don't know, just to try something different, just every once in a while, not as a regular thing. Okay, let's talk about this uh, this swirly bokeh. So swirly bokeh, it's a lens. It's a lens from a lens company called Lens Baby. You guys have probably seen these things before. I've talked about Lens Baby a bit on the show. We did a whole show about their their misty, soft, focused lens is really, really pretty. Uh, we'll link to that up here. Did a show on that a while ago. Actually did that one kind of live, brought in a model, and we looked through the camera and swirled with swirled the background and made it all pretty and soft. And it was really cool. And I was thinking of doing the same th thing with this. But as you're going to see, as I'm showing you some photos that I've taken, it's a, it's a little bit more of a challenge to get the result out of this. So, so let, let's back up a little bit. Let's talk about what this this is. The lens is called the Burnside, the Burnside 35. I think there's a longer one as well. You know, it's a 35 millimeter, regardless what lens mount you get on it. And I will say straight up that if you're shooting full frame, you will probably get better results with this lens than I'm getting with Micro Four Thirds. Because it even says in the instructions that full frame will give you a more swirly effect. And again, as you're gonna see in a moment here, I had a little bit of a hard time getting the swirly effect. I finally figured it out, I finally nailed it, but it, it definitely was a challenge. Um, but if you're shooting full frame, this is probably a bit more of an interesting lens to you. But we'll come back again at the end and talk about whether this is a lens you want to add into your arsenal. It is a 35 millimeter f2.8, again, regardless of the lens mount. Obviously, this one is a Micro Four Thirds because that's what I'm shooting with. And I want to do a special thanks to B&H. They're the ones who provided this lens. Um, it's actually kind of a funny story. There was a, a one lens, one copy of the lens up for grabs for any of the reviewers, and I was the first one to claim it. So I got it. And that was a while ago, and it's taking me a while to finally do a review, but here we are. We're finally doing a look at, not a review, just, you know, a look at. So we're, we're finally here, but that's, that's what we're doing. I do an unboxing, but, you know, it's just a lens in a box, so you don't really need to see that. But one of the cool things about the box is it does have a little tiny instruction thing on here that is exceptionally useful and helpful. Let's, uh, let's just get this into frame here and show you what this says on here. Um, you see it says the model, for max swirl, shoot wide open at f2.8, include foreground subjects three feet or closer to the camera, and separate the subject at least 12 feet from the textured background. This is really, really important because if you don't have your distance ratios proportions right, you're not gonna get the swirly effect. You still get shallow depth of field, you get a nice bokeh, but you don't get the swirl. And the swirl is, of course, the entire purpose of this lens. So, um, how does this work? Well, it's there's some weird optics happening inside but they give it the swirl, but there's one particular feature that is utterly unique I've never seen on a lens before that makes this really quite clever and helps to enhance or detract if you don't want as much of that swirl in there. And it's a second aperture. What? This lens has two apertures in it. Weird, right? Okay, let's, let's just take a close-up look at the lens itself. So here you go. Here's the lens. Nice, simple mechanical lens. You've got a, let's turn it this way, mechanical aperture. So it starts f2.8, goes down to f16, and these are stops. You can kind of hear them hear the clicks in there. This is not a clickless aperture, so not ideal for video, and, and, and you could use it for video. Um, a little bit tough, but well, you'll, you'll see. I shot a little video with this. And then your focus ring, and the focus is a big, long focus pole. So from there's infinity all the way around to its closest focus point, which is, what does that say? Um, I can't even read it upside down. Six inches. So it's a long, stiff focus pole on there, which is great 
for doing portraits because you have that resistance in the lens. You're not you know, touching it and it's like, oh, it suddenly jumps out of focus. It's a very slow pull. So you can do a very accurate adjustment, very slow adjustment on the lens. However, that also means it's not great for shooting things that are moving. Uh, you'll see the photos, of some of the first photos I did were of my kid. And uh, I deleted all the out of focus ones because three-year-olds don't sit still very well. And uh, so I got a lot of missed focus shots because it is hard to get that focus just right. Now, with a manual focus lens on one of the Lumix cameras, on well, probably any mirrorless camera, you do have the advantage of focus peaking. And focus peaking works great but it was still a little bit hard. Like focus peaking doesn't show up quite as quickly, quite as, as um, naturally or as obviously, I guess I could say, as it does with a standard lens. And it's just part of the inherent softness of it. Remember, focus peaking is looking for those really high contrast, sharp areas on the sensor. Then it says, okay, that must be in focus. Then it puts a little red or blue, whatever color you've decided line on it to tell you it's in focus. Because the nature of this lens is that it's a bit soft, you don't you have a harder time getting it. Like I could get focus peaking showing up on my beard quite easily, but not on my face. It was really hard to get on my eyes, like the eyelashes it would show up, but usually I'd see focus peaking around the nose and, and maybe even some of the pores in your skin, but not with this. So that was, so it's a little bit harder to focus. Um, not to detract from the lens at all by saying that, but just be aware it is a little bit harder to focus. Okay, so let's go back in for this close up here. And I wanna show you this, this extra part of it, the second aperture. That's what this gold knob is right here. It's a nice big gold knob, and that just slides all the way up there to that position there, and that is actually opening and closing a second aperture. So let's take a look inside of it. Let's take this off and take that off. I want to actually make sure this is open all the way. So we'll start off with your basic aperture, right? You have your standard aperture ring, and you can see that closing down in there, right? Just like you would expect. And then I'm going to take that gold knob and start moving that, and look, it's a second aperture. Let me, let me bring this in a little bit closer here. This is, it's really quite interesting. See that second aperture in there? So you see the first one behind it? Ooh. And then the second one. And so what this is doing is it's adding a bit of a vignette to the scene. You're darkening the edges, you're vignetting it. It is also reducing the shallow depth of field. So your background bokeh becomes darker and less bokeh-y, less out of focus. It gets, you know, your shallow, your depth of field gets, gets broadened a little bit by doing it. Um, which is really interesting. And yes, you could of course just add a vignette in post, but the vignette does, again, that second aperture does affect the swirly a little bit. Not much, but it does affect the swirly a little bit. And of course, it's always nice to get things done in camera so you know exactly what you're getting out of the camera. So, so that's the physics of the lens. It's nice construction. It's, this is solid metal. It's heavy. It feels good in your hand. The, again, the focus ring is quite stiff, but I think this is to, uh, to its advantage. The aperture ring, also quite stiff, definitely stepped. So not ideal for video if you wanted to change aperture while you're shooting video. But let's face it, if you're shooting video and you want to change the exposure, you probably should put a neutral density filter on there anyway. Um, and that's about it. That's all there is to it. So with that said, we're going to take a look at some pictures on in Lightroom that I've already shot with it. And we're going to look at some successes and some failures in trying to get that swirly bokeh so you can see exactly what this looks like. Um, once again, we are this is live. So for those of you who are watching live, I see there's a whole bunch of comments flying by here, which is awesome. Uh, we will come to those in the Q&A. And also before I jump into this, I do want to add one more thing here and just throw up my little title, so my little uh, ad slide, if you will, my house ad, to remind you of our value for value model. In a case like today's show, if you find value in today's show and you actually want to buy this lens, the best thing that you can do is use the affiliate links that we'll have down below, also listed on that value page. And specifically, if you're going to buy this lens, please do buy it from B&H. B&H provided this for me to be able to work with, and uh, we want to say thanks for them for that. So please do that. But any other value that you feel you've taken out of the show, if you want to contribute back, you can head over to photojoseph.com support, and you'll see there's methods to contribute like Patreon, PayPal, shopping in the affiliate store, uh, viewing my training on lynda.com, and I'm an author there. Or if you want to hire me directly, I am available. One of the coolest things you can do, however, is join me in India. Who wants to go to India? I'm going to India January 30th through February 9th next year, 2019. This is going to be a photography workshop and it is going to be an adventure to end all adventures. It's going to be insanely awesome. It's going to be an incredible, incredible once in a lifetime photographic experience and opportunity. And I highly encourage you to head over to photojoseph.com slash India to check it out. And if you, even if you can't join me on this one, if you can't join me on this one, I'll see you on another one. But Check it out, photojoseph.com slash India. Okay, with that said, let's, uh, let's, oh, and you know what, one more thing, sorry, I'm gonna do one more quick little promo here. I almost forgot about this. Out of Chicago, that is next weekend, January 22nd, 24th, so this is coming up quick. If you haven't signed up, I think there's slots left, but there might not be actually, but go to outofchicago.com slash summer, and if you do wanna sign up for that, uh, use the code photojoseph, and you can learn all about that workshop there. 
next weekend in Chicago. Going to be awesome. Okay, let's take a look at some pictures in Lightroom. So let's see. We'll start off with, look at it, my own little photographer. Isn't that cute? Um, it, okay, total fail on the swirl, right? A little bit on the couch here, a little bit of weird bokeh. But okay, this is clearly not working. So I took, took it outside. And here's the first shot that I got where I went, okay, there we go. So see this nice swirly background in there. I really got it there. Finally, I got the distance just right. And I've, I've thrown away a lot of the out-of-focus pictures. You're not seeing everything here. But really got that swirl showing up in there. And then I went for something that wasn't moving. <laughs> um, and you can see the swirl showing up nicely there. So you, you can get it. You just got to get the distance just right. So again, here, my son, just a nice, the proper distance to the subject, um, kind of three feet-ish away. And then the background is 12 feet or four. And, and this is definitely more than 12 feet, but it is giving me that nice swirly bokeh in the background there. And you can see it looks pretty good. And I found the best way to get a kid to sit down is to give him food. So let me show forward a couple frames. Oh, right, the, the cherry. So here... I think what's happening, you're seeing less of the swirl in the background and you're seeing more bokeh in that, right? You're seeing more of the uh, the background, the background blur, bokeh swirl, bokeh dots, we'll call them that, are bigger in this picture and less of a swirl. And what's happening here is I'm closer to the subject, right? This cherry, I'm probably maybe a foot or so away. So I'm quite close to the subject. So the delta the difference between me to subject versus subject to background is quite a bit bigger and arguably a little bit too big to really make that swirl stand out. And here again, the swirl's almost completely gone. And then let's see here. Oh, I was playing with the sun flare. See what we got out of that. Because of that second aperture, even shooting wide open, we're getting some interesting flares coming through. It wasn't great, but you know, a little bit of a star pattern in there. Um, and then here we go. You give the kid some food, give him a cherry to chew on, and he'll sit down and hold still. And that allowed me to play around a little bit more and get some nice swirl in there. So some decent swirl. Like that, that one's kind of okay on the swirl. Um, there we're getting a little bit more. It's it's tough, right? It's tough to really find it. I think that it's you you definitely need to play with it a bit. You definitely need to play with your distance to subject. Uh, maybe you know changing the angle off the from the background off of the lens seems to make a little bit of a difference as well. It's an interesting thing to play with. When you find it, you go, oh, that's cool. It's really, it's there, but it's a little bit hard to find. Oh, uh, let's see, some more pictures. Okay, so here I'm going really close to the subject, and there you can see the swirl's completely gone, right? So the, the, even there, if we pulled back a little bit, uh, the background's not quite as blurry, but the swirl is just missing from there. And then this is the one that I use in the title card, and you can see the see a bit of the swirl happening in there, which is uh, quite, it's pretty good, pretty prominent swirl in there. Now, here's one of the things that I found that makes really, really good swirl. Contrasty background, right? If you have uh, just a solid, well, if I have a solid background like this, it's, you're not going to get any swirl at all. If you have a textured background, you're going to get a bit more. If you have a textured and a high contrast background, so in the case of uh, sun coming through the leaves and getting that really dappled light, so lots of bright spots, lots of dark spots, that's where it becomes the most noticeable. And so one of the things, if you look at one of their sample photos, maybe, uh, maybe it's not here, somewhere I saw a sample photo where there's some lights, like Christmas lights in the background. I actually brought lights in this morning and I set them up here and I was trying, but I still couldn't quite get the swirl. I think because I had the bright spotlights, but the background was just solid black, it just wasn't there. So if you wanted to have, if you wanted to create a studio environment type of a setting where you'd get that swirl, you'd have to have a lot of texture, a lot of layers and texture to your spotted lights and your dark backgrounds and so on to really get it. But that said, if it's a look that you like and you wanted to be able to do it in studio, it's the kind of thing you'd find a set, set it up and kind of leave that there. It'd be the set that you would use for that. Okay, let's take a look at a couple other pictures. Um, so, okay, here trying, so this is where I was, I talked about how I couldn't I was having a hard time focusing even on myself. So this is, I'm selfieing this and trying to get the focus with focus peaking to make sure that I'm in focus. It would hit my beard, the face, the glasses, it really wasn't focus peaking on. So it's just a little bit soft in there. But you can see, we're just trying to kind of get a little bit of that swirl in there, just seeing what happens if I get a bit closer to the subject. So, you know, there, there you're getting some swirl in there as I'm rotating around, getting different backgrounds. Now here I tried video. So I got two videos to show you. The first one here, this is, I'm just going to mute this for now, there's nothing to hear, just so you could see the movement in the background. And we tend to lose a bit of the swirly effect. So I'm just standing there and kind of spinning 360. We lose a bit of that swirly as the, as the motion of the camera happens. We just don't see it as much, um, which I thought was kind of interesting. I was hoping that I'd get a really interesting, cool swirl in the video, but it just wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite cutting it there. Um, so there's, there's that. So there was that effect. I was hoping to see more of a swirl in the video that I didn't get. Not to say that you couldn't get it, but I think you'd have to, because it's so precise, getting that swirl takes exactly the right 
kind of combination of distance and so on, that if you found a shot and did a lock shot with video, that would be great, but moving it around like this, not so much. Now, the next video that I'm going to play, I'm going to bring the audio back up for this one, is uh, I'm just, I've got the camera basically sitting down, sitting on my camera bag, and I'm running through aperture settings and the second aperture settings. We can see the effect of the background, and I'm narrating it, so you're going to listen to me on the video talking through this now. And by the way, when you were seeing the panning before and it was stuttering a little bit, that's because it was shot 30p, but this video is broadcast in 24p. That's why you're seeing the stuttering there in case you were wondering. Okay, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. 180 degree shutter. We are at auto ISO at focus at infinity at f16. So I'm going to move the focus to about two feet away from the camera. Barely gonna auto focus in the background there. Now let's start stopping it down, or opening it up from 16 to 11 and f8 and f5.6 and you start to see a little bit more a little bit of the swirl coming in not much yet f4 you start to see a little bit more of that shape and finally at 2.8 we're going to see quite a bit more of it i will adjust the focus just to see that swirl come in and out so if you get too much bokeh it all blends together you don't really see it it really is a case of finding just the right amount of bokeh so that you get that swirly effect and then there's the vignetting. The vignetting is currently closed. You open it up and you get more bokeh, but it does get a little bit brighter. The vignetting definitely adds some darkening around the edges of the frame. Let's maybe open it up a little bit more. Open up the vignette all the way and play with the focus just to play with that bokeh shape in the background there. All right, so there you see what you're getting. It's You can see how much it changes. And I wanted to do this live for you in the studio like I would normally do for this live show, but I just I couldn't recreate it in here, so I shot this in advance so that I could just play that for you. Um, it's Obviously, you're getting it, but you can see there how precise you have to get to get the swirl. You get too much bokeh, the swirl blends together, you don't see the swirl, get in, not enough bokeh, and it's just a slightly out of focus background. So it really is finding just the right position for that. Uh, let's take a look at a couple more photos in here. I was playing with lens flare. I wanted to see what the flare looked like. So we, you are getting some interesting color striations. So that's kind of cool, right? It's just one of those one of those side effects of this type of lens. And then here I went to grab a coffee thinking, okay, what, what about using this in kind of a, a commercial setting? Like I want to take a, a product photo and have a cool swirly background. I thought coffee shop, this would be a great place for it. Get this coffee in the cool background. There's going to be people and it can be all kind of swirly. And I just, I never quite got it. I mean, I only took a couple of pictures because it just wasn't, pulling together, I just could not get the right amount of, I couldn't get any swirl in there. So I took a couple of pictures because I was there, but I mean, obviously they suck and that's just, there's nothing exciting here. There is no swirl happening at all, which was kind of a bummer. And then I stopped by the cemetery and this is probably where I got the best swirly shots. Here we can really see the swirl in the trees in there, the swirl in that background. And this is maximized, maxed out, it's f2.8 with the secondary aperture closed all the way. And here I think it could look quite nice. It's a very, interesting dramatic effect and I quite like the way this looks on here. Now this is it, uh, I think the next picture, yeah, so these two photos here, I'm focused here, I'm focused on the flag and you can see the, the out of focus swirly background. And then I shifted the focus to the background just to see it's a, barely a shift in the focus because I'm, uh, well, whatever, it's just a barely a shift in the focus ring. And you can see obviously the swirl goes away because it's now sharp. But if you take a look in the background here, you see a little bit more of the swirl happening back there, just a little bit of it. And we don't see the swirl in the foreground. That was part of what I wanted to see. Do we get swirly in the foreground? And no, we don't. So it's it's really, it requires that, as the box says, have that subject relatively close to you with the background farther off. And then you can get some nice swirly effects in there that can, you know, can look quite good. It's, it's quite an interesting dramatic effect. So that is the samples that I wanted to show you. That's what I shot with it. Nothing really exciting, dramatic. Um, I was kind of going to do like about the model and stuff, and it just never came together. It's it, it's it's an interesting effect. So, should you buy one? That's what it ultimately comes down to. Well, it's not cheap. It's about a five hundred dollar lens. This is not an inexpensive lens. If you need a thirty five millimeter wide aperture of two eight portrait type lens, well, I think it's not really portrait at thirty five if you're full frame. So it's, it's definitely a bit wider lens. If you're shooting micro four thirds, then of course you get that portrait effect out of it because it's doubling, it's a 70 millimeter. And you're you're doing the kind of photos where if you're doing, let's say, group photos, but let's say you're doing portraits and you're shooting a couple people together and you want to have that some kind of unique, funky, swirly background. And you're doing this a lot. Like if this is part of your business, let's say senior portraits. If you do senior portraits, there you go. There's the market. If you do senior portraits, I think this could be really cool. It'll give your 
subjects give your clients something a bit different. Um, there is a nice sample photo on here. Let me let me pull this back up into the uh, into the frame here. There we go. This is on the box, and that is a that's a beautiful portrait of the couple, and you can really get that swirled background in there. Um, it's you know, they've definitely played on the whole kind of Pacific Northwest color scheme in there. It just it just really works for that picture and for that look. It's cool. I, I think that it is cool. It's expensive though. So again, is it worth it? I would say if you're doing these kind of portraits a lot, again, senior portraits I think would be a great example for this. If you're doing that thing a lot, then I'd say, sure, it's worth having. Um, I don't know if you can rent this lens. It's such a unique product. I don't know that any of the rental houses have it. I haven't looked. Um, if they do, then obviously that's a great way to try it out. But I will say that you're going to need a little bit of time with it to really start to get the feel of it. I've shot with it you know, a fair amount, not a huge amount, and it did take me a while to really kind of feel, hit the stride with it and figure out how to get the look that I wanted out of it. Um, and I'll keep working with it. I'm going to keep playing with it. It's, uh, this one's mine to keep. Thank you very much, B&H and, uh, and the Lens Baby for uh, providing this. So I will continue to play with it. And if I come up with any other really awesome imagery out of it, I will absolutely share those with you. Um, be sure to follow on Instagram, Photo Joseph, that sort of thing. That's where, I, um, that's where I'll put those things as well. Okay. That, my friends, is that. So it is time. That is that is the show. We've wrapped up the show. It is time to move on to the Q&A. If you have any questions that you want to ask, whether it's about this or anything else at all, then uh, your chance to do that is coming up right now.